Hello, how are we all? It's good to see you here again today. Today I thought I would talk about uh, some signs and symptoms of spiritual awakening. So we all have different things that happen to us when we start our spiritual awakening path. And I get lots of comments, questions, uh, people going, why is this happening? What does this mean? And so I thought it might be easy just to do a video to explain some of the different things that can happen to you when you start on your spiritual path. So you'll hear people talk about a spiritual awakening. So I will literally describe this as a door opening in your uh, spiritual self. So you've literally opened that door, whether you want to see that door opening within your soul or within your mind's eye, your third chakra is, doesn't matter. However you see it, it is a door that is opening pretty much all the way so that you can start working with your guides, angels, archangels, uh, whichever spiritual beliefs that you have are going to work for you on your path. So whether you have religious based beliefs, they're still going to work for you. All right. You just choose what works for you, who you connect with, what their names are, how it works for you, how you see them. The processes and things that you use on your spiritual path will be uh, refined for what will work for you. All right. I'm quite open in my spirituality, so I get lots and lots of different perceptions, different symptoms, different signs. I've had lots and lots and lots over my um, 52 years of living, especially in the last 30 years lots of different things have occurred happened psychic things behavioral things things that have changed in my physical nature that I've gone I don't know what that is you know and I've gone off to the doctor got these things checked and there's nothing physically wrong with me it's literally me opening up to my psychic self my spiritual awakening Connecting with my higher self, inner self, whatever you want to call it. Connecting with God, source, creator, energy. Whatever words work for you is what you're going to sit with. So what I've done today is I've outlined 20 of the main signs and symptoms. Things that you might find happen to you. You might get all of them. You might not get any of them. You might have your own special little list of things that have happened for you. Feel free to share in the comments. I would love to hear what your spiritual awakening signs and symptoms have been. So feel free to share, uh, comment, uh, and just we can have a conversation about it. it. would be great. So I've broken them into three sections. I've called them psychic uh, symptoms and physical things that you will notice. So with your psychic awakening, you're going to find that uh, you are going to start hearing people talking to you. If you are someone that receives information auditorially, so you get it through through sound, you are going to hear voices. All right. If you've been to the doctor, seen your mental health professional, and you know it's not anything uh, medical, then it's most likely your spirit guides, angels, archangels, uh, wanting to connect with you. All right. You've opened that door and they've gone, yep, she's ready. You know, you've given them permission, like I've mentioned in some of my other videos, to start working with your spiritual helpers. You just simply need to go, I give you permission to be part of my life. All right, I give you permission right now to come into my life and help me with specific things or with everything. You just ask. All right? As soon as you ask, they are there to help you. They are your spiritual support network. Just like you have friends, family to be your physical support network, they are your spiritual support network. And they can give you information that your friends and family can't even possibly tap into it's just amazing once you start connecting so the signs and symptoms can be subtle they can be quite intense okay so a lot of people will start hearing voices and they're off to the doctor and I don't know what that is I've talked about it before on my videos about how I've been at expos and heard people saying my name and I'm like well who is that that was one of my first signs was actually hearing my name said very very clearly and I'm like, OK, there's no one physical here talking to me. So it's got to be the spiritual dudes wanting to connect and say hello. OK, so premonitions are another one along the psychic sense of things. When you start opening yourself psychically, whether it be in your dreams, your daydreams, just in your general reality, you might get feelings of premonition. It might be a gut feeling. You might get a visual thing that you see. You might see a movie. You might get a 
flash like this flash of information comes at you and you're like where's that coming from that's type of premonition type of precognition getting information about things that haven't happened yet and this can be uh, small things medium-sized things big things you know they're just testing the waters to see what is going to work for you so a lot of people ask me about premonitions they're like oh i'm not psychic at all but last night i dreamt that you know the husband's car was going to break down and i got up this morning and he's rang me from work to say that his car's broken down and i'm like there you go you are connected some people are fearful of it and that's fine you can only work on it when you're ready to absolutely when you're ready to now seeing colors with your physical eyes i quite often will be talking to someone and as a confirmation my archangel support network will send me a ball of color about the size of a tennis ball so i will see this uh generally it's a if it's archangel michael it will be a cobalt blue uh, circle of light and it'll be there for about three or four seconds and it's gone sometimes if i'm going in the wrong direction or i'm not listening to what they're telling me and i know they're got my best interests interested heart and i technically should be following their direction and choose not to uh, i will get a red light or a black light and i'll go okay i need to rethink what i'm doing so it's really important for me as being of a high vibration is that I listen more and I don't let my ego get in the way because occasionally it still does. As we all do, we just have to get over it. We aren't in control of our lives fully. We have control over the direction through their guidance. You make the choices through the lessons that you are given. That's a whole other topic we can talk about one day. Uh, but it's just trusting, trusting and allowing and believing that they are here. Okay, we've looked at the psychic symptoms. Some of the physical things, you may get headaches. I found when I first started, I'm not a headache person. Don't ever get headaches. Never a sign or a symptom of anything physical. For, for me, spiritually, if I'm getting a headache, I'm being told that my vibration is changing. It's going up a rung. Quite often too, I'll, my vision will change. And I think, is that just old age? I'm getting to the age where I need glasses. Uh, and then the sight will come back again you know within a day two days my vision will be absolutely perfect again and it's not like blinding like you can't see just like things start to get blurry and i'm like oh and i've talked to quite a few psychics about this and they've said they've had the same thing as their vibration has changed for one of them particularly she found that her eyesight changed and then it came back again all right so it's one of the things just to be aware of of course if it continues to be bad you'll go to the optometrist and you may need glasses all right you always keep the physical uh in you always keep your physicality in place okay so if you feel like your eyes are really getting that bad and these headaches aren't spiritual go and see your optometrist go and see your doctor okay i'm only putting forward some of the signs of spiritual awakening that i have i had happen to me uh, that I've had happen to other psychics, I've had happen to clients that have commented uh, on different things. So another thing that you can have happen is with the headaches. So the headaches can be head, front, back, at the base of your skull is one place where you sometimes can get headaches. Sometimes in here under your eyebrows and they head up to where your third brow is, your third brow chakra right there. You'll get a pulsing uh, headaches. Sometimes you can feel like someone's got their thumb and they're just pressing it like right into your forehead. That is your, your third brow chakra getting ready to open a bit more. So just go with the flow. If you need to take headache tablets, take them, okay? But just be sensible about it. If you're feeling like it's not a spiritual awakening and you've been to the doctor and the headaches are still there, go and get it checked out. So I'm just laying out some of the things that can happen. Heart flutters. That was one of my first things that I experienced when I started on my spiritual path is that I'm driving across the Tasman Bridge, five lanes of traffic, and I'm like, oh my God, my heart, what if, what if I pass out? So I actually went to the doctor, got checked out, nothing wrong with me. My heart is actually two centimetres bigger than the average heart, then I am a tall person, so. But I know when my heart flutters or I get palpitations, it is a sign for me that there are certain type of energies that are present which I've, I've recognized that over the years of doing the house healing work that I do and the energy clearing work. 
Ah, buzzing in the ears. Don't we all love the ringing that we get in our ears? Not at all. I have up to six different sounds all happening in my ears all at the same time sometimes. I don't know what it is. I ask management, what is this ringing? Is it setting up like a, a, a boundary for us, like a physical barricade from certain types of energies? Is it a way that you communicate with us? Is it the light language communication? I don't get any information on tinnitus ringing in the ears, so I can't pass anything on to you, but I just know that it is part of when my vibration is changing or when they want to let me know something, I'll get a certain sandal change and I'm like, oh, so it could be something that gets your attention as well. But I know a lot of people who say that they're not spiritual, but have ringing in the ears as well. It could just be a totally medical thing. I just don't know. But I know that when I started on my spiritual path, it was one of my first signs was massive ringing in my ears that nothing will clear up. You just have to learn to not focus on it because it is always there. Okay, some of the behavioural things that you'll notice. Your relationships can change with people, like seriously. When your vibration starts to raise and you're changing your, your habits, your thoughts, your words, your actions and your reactions are changing, people are like, what's going on with her? There's something different about her. They either like it or they don't like it. They're either triggered by it or they're happy for you. You just don't worry about what other people think. You just continue on letting your spiritual path develop because they'll either come with you or they'll fall away because that relationship is not deemed necessary anymore. Sometimes relationships, and this is personal, uh, social relationships uh, and friends and family, sometimes people just fall away from your life and you just need to let them go because you're not meant to be in contact with them anymore. I always say to people, when you're on your spiritual path, surround yourself with people that are valuable and beneficial for your spiritual and personal growth. People who are negative, who are going to put you down, who are going to doubt and judge what you're doing, they're projecting how they're feeling. So don't absorb that because that's not yours. As I said to people, it's not yours. Don't worry about it. Let it go. They're obviously triggered by what you're doing. And that's either you're triggering them because they're fearful of what you're doing or they're like wow I want that too but I'm not quite ready okay so you just let people filter out of your life if necessary like seriously your diet's going to change I can tell you now you can't eat all the heavy food that you used to eat in the past like seriously I have found this for me I've had to give up so many things but I found that I can live without them I can live without the heavy food the bread the donuts, the, the rice, the pasta. Occasionally I'll eat it. If I go to someone's place for dinner and they serve me up like fried rice with something, I'll eat it. I'm not going to be rude. But if I make my own personal choice uh, during my daily uh, intake of food is that I'll avoid all heavy foods and lots of fruit, vegetables, cooked and uncooked, all right, as you are guided. I found during my spiritual awakening path that I'll be guided to eat a certain colour. So I'll eat greens, more greens than anything else for a week. And then it'll be oranges and then it'll be reds uh, and then it'll be yellows. And I'm like, OK, I just follow what they are guiding me to eat. Same with drinking. I don't drink alcohol anyway because I, I just don't have stimulants. Um, another thing I'm going to come back to that is that when you start on your spiritual path, you're going to feel lighter, brighter. Your energy is going to change and you're not going to know what's hit you. You're not going to be able to cope with it for a while either. You're like, well, there's something wrong with me. What is going on? I find now uh, I've never drunk coffee, but I don't have tea. I've never drunk Coca-Cola, but I don't even have lemonade or anything that's a highly stimulating. It's just I can't have that because it pings me off the walls uh, like I'm just hypo, like seriously. So I have a small amount of sugar. Homemade baked goodies is about all I'm allowed. You just got to get over it. All right, you eat the wrong thing and then you know you shouldn't have eaten it. Believe me, you will know. Uh, manifesting. Oh my God. Things manifest so much faster when you're on your spiritual path. When you start trusting, allowing and believing that your guides are there, guides, angels, archangels, whichever you want to work with. I go straight to the top and work with the archangels. Okay, I've still got spirit guides there working away in the background. Um, but I go straight up to management level guides because they are who work with me through the house healing, the energy field clearing, uh, through clearing my own energy field. 
uh, and working on the land. So I go straight to the management type guides because I work with quite heavy types of energies when I'm clearing properties. So I need the big guns. I need the big guys to come and help. So manifesting becomes easier. No, they're not going to give you personal gain. You know, you're never going to be a size 10 if you're not meant to be, and you're not going to get the tats lotto numbers. All right, you want to be a size 10, you work on it through diet, exercise, changing behaviors, patterns, all those sorts of things in the physical. They're not instantly going to give you everything that you want. They will support you through your path. You know, I said, I'm not really happy with my career. I need a new direction. Can you please give me some options? I had all these new things open up. And I went, I want to do that and do that and do that. And I don't want to do that. And I don't want to do that anymore. So I've let go of things that aren't valuable for me anymore. They were valuable in the past. I'm getting a big yes on this. And we want to hang on to those because we think, oh, we're going to let someone down if we quit. Or we're going to let someone down if we're not there. But it's not valuable for us to be there anymore. We've moved on. We have to let go of the ties. Time in solitude is really important to actually be in your own space. And I mean without any tech stuff. Just go out and sit in the garden. Go for a walk on the beach. Just tuning into your own energy. Give yourself half an hour a day where you do absolutely nothing. And that is the hardest thing in the world. It's even harder than doing meditation when you're a beginner. Is to actually sit and do nothing. Or lie and do nothing. Or go outside, you know, and just pat the dog. Well, I'm more of the plants. You're like, I have to be doing something else. No, you don't. You need to be tuning into your own energy, centering and grounding yourself. Really, really important. My grounding methods are, I use the Australian bushflower essences. I used fringe violet and angel sword for protecting my energy field. I use red lily for grounding me uh, because I'm quite spiritual and with a high vibration, I need that to help, help me keep me connected to the earth. I said, they work for me. I'll go outside and play with the dog and water my plants and go and sit in the garden. That works for me as grounding. Okay, so we're going to finish up with being grateful, saying thank you. When you're on your spiritual path, it is so important to say thank you to your guides, angels, archangels, and to yourself. Say thank you to yourself, to your heart, to your soul, all right? Because you are an important person. You are here for a reason. Yes, we've got all the crap that we've got to get through in our life, all the lessons that we've got to learn. As you learn them and they start to filter away, I'm getting a big yes on this, is you just start to say thank you and you're grateful. Thank you so much for putting me through that experience. I learned so much. Thank you for being part of my life. I don't always say it every time I work with the guides, angels, archangels. But I'll do an en masse one every now and again and go, I'm really sorry, guys and girls. I forgot to say thank you. They know. They know by your energy how you're living your life because they are watching you 24-7. You cannot escape your spirit guides. Like, seriously, they are there all the time. They do not judge you. They will not point the finger. They might poke you in the back every now and again if you're making stupid choices. I'm guilty. I've had that one. Uh, it's because I'm not listening. And they're going, why are you doing that? Don't do it. And I'll go, Oop, okay, I need to do that instead. So it's just having fun with it too. Your spiritual path is all about embracing your soul energy, your higher self, your connection to the oneness that we are all part of. Okay, we are all one with the universe. I know that sounds corny, but once you start realizing it and start embracing it, the manifesting, your health improves, right? Your thoughts, emotions, your reactions improve to other people. You don't get triggered by other people's stuff anymore. You don't get triggered by your own stuff. You literally go, why is that upsetting me? You're your own counsellor. Why is that upsetting me? Oh, because my ego is in the way. Well, I'm just going to let that go because that thing is not valuable for me anymore. You let go of people in your life. You have to just go, you know what? I am just going to trust on the path and have fun with it. All right, I'm 52, right? Seriously, most people would go, really? You don't act like a 52-year-old? Well, how's the 52-year-old supposed to act? I have fun with my spiritual path and that makes it more light and enjoyable and I'm able to manifest more into my life. They are there to help. I trust them absolutely 100%, all right? So I hope that has been useful and helpful for you today. If you've liked my video, 
Please subscribe to my channel, share it with your friends and family members who are interested in spiritual path and awakening. I've got lots of videos on my Facebook page, which is Spiritual Being, uh, B-E hyphen I-N-G, because we are spiritual beings, uh, being spiritual. That's my little play on words. And thank you for coming today and listening to me ramble on, but it's valuable rambling on. Uh, lots of great information out there for you. And I hope to be online again very soon with lots of different topics. If there's anything that you want me to talk about, put it in the comments. All right. If there's anything that you want to discuss, put it in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So have a great day. Look after each other and be safe. And I will be back very, very soon. I will see you then. Bye.